So I'm not going to get too, too detailed about how I created the focal bead because you can do this to any focal bead that you want to put on a bracelet. But in case you want to know what I did, I silk screened using Funky Mountains and Champagne Gold Extreme Sheen Deco Art Paint, which works really well on polymer clay. So that's this pattern. And I also rolled out some Primo Bronze. This is a mix of souffle clays uh, in this sort of colorway. A bunch of greens and turquoise scraps I just mixed together till it was smooth. And then I made my silk screen design. This is bronze. This is the TJ Floyd Secret Garden cutter, which I thought was excellent for making this type of um, focal bead for a bracelet. And this is the, the little cross from the um, arabesque set of cutters. So those are the shapes that I'm using. And then some time a while ago, I got this in the mail. I can't remember what it was for, but it was this metal dome. And I kept it, of course. Um, it's a little bit bigger than any of the domes on the Sculpey Hollow bead maker which I also have and I use for this type of project all the time, but this is bigger and has a gentle curve, so I thought it would be better for doing this. So basically, I layered these shapes and I'm going to bake it on this so that it has that gentle curve. I'm not gonna press it down onto the whole thing. I'm just going to lay it and let it curve in one direction only so that it'll curve around my wrist. And now as a finishing touch, I'm going to use my Sculpey Gold Liquid and I'm going to outline this design. And this is just for decorative purposes. I don't need to do this for the clay to stick. And you can do anything else that you want to your focal bead. Now here's where we have some fun creating custom bakeable tools for ourselves. okay? Now what I want you to know is that I love Amazing Mold Putty, but it has a shelf life. So on top of my box, I have written when this was purchased. Because after about six months, your Amazing Mold Putty starts to lose its ability to mold anything and it will just stay putty. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to when you purchased your mold putty so that it doesn't go bad on you. I wish that they would stamp it with an expiration date like they do on food, but right now the company does not do that. So I'm going to mix some of this up and show you how to make a tool for making slides. So the bracelet I'm going to make is this one, and it's part of the set that makes um we have three bracelets in a kit and this is part of the basics it's got two browns and a black and it also has the ends the crimp ends which are cut to fit your bracelet all you have to do is give them a squeeze with a plier and this is eight inches of leather which is way too much for me i probably would cut off at least two inches of this but I will wait and see after I put my bead on how much give I have before I go cutting the leather. Measure twice, cut once, as they always say. So the leather is a couple millimeters thick and I wanna make a slide that will go over this leather so that I can put my, my bead somewhere in the middle of the bracelet. Now alternatively, you can glue it. So if you know you want to keep it this way forever and you like that bead on that bracelet or if you're somebody who sells your bracelets, you might want to just use weld bond glue and glue the bead right onto the leather piece. But I'm going to do the slide because I think it's a fun thing to show you how to do. So when I mix my mold putty, basically I'm going to be rolling it flat and I can use my pasta machine for this and cutting a strip that's just a little bit wider than this and 
just about as thick as this that I can use as a baking tool. Amazing Mold Putty is a one-to-one -one product, so you just need equal amounts of both, and then you just want to mix it up real quick. And I like to do it by sort of a smushing motion, because you don't want to see any white in your yellow. You want it to be all one uniform yellow color. I've moved my surface away so that you can see what I'm doing on my glass tabletop. And what I'm going to do is make a sort of snake with this. Use my roller to flatten it out. You want it to be thin. And then we're going to use the leather as a guide. And I'm just going to cut off outside the leather. So that this will firm up and be a little bit wider and a little bit thicker than my leather piece. And now when I build a bead over the top of this, which you'll see in the next step, I can slide it right onto my leather. So here's my layered bead, and I'm just going to pop it off of here. It's, it's cool now. And this is my piece of amazing mold putty that is now ready to use. So basically, if you have an idea, you can do your mold putty piece while your other piece is baking because this only takes 15 minutes to set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this in here and I've rolled out some more of that bronze clay. So as I'm doing this, I want this to kind of lay down inside of here. So I'm just going to grab a glue dot. and use that to hold my silicone piece in place while I'm working. All right, and then my plan here is to just make a couple of, huh, we'll see how that works, to make a couple of um, pieces that will act as a slide. So I'm going to firm them over my silicone and onto the bead. And I'm going to use a lot of finger pressure here just to hold everything together and smooth everything. So I'm pressing this down onto the already baked clay and I'm just using my finger to kind of smear it off the edge here, which helps it to bond and make a nice edge against the other clay. So I'm just working it gently into shape and then smearing it off the side. Pushing really nice and hard with my finger to make sure that I've got a good bond here on the sides with the clay. So let me zoom in on that a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'll just continue to use my thumb to smear and smooth these pieces where they come together with the rest of the clay. And this is going to go in for a second baking just like this so that after I bake it, because the mold putty is bakeable at this temperature, 
After I bake it, I'll pull the mold putty out and I'll slip the leather in. And you can make this as smooth and finished on the back as you like. If you're selling your pieces, it's always good to have a nice back on them. You can put a decoration back here, whatever you like. For my purposes right now, I'm going to stop here because I just want to show you how it fits together in the end. Here's my bead out of the oven. And just to show you how I did this, I actually flipped it upside down and cradled it in that same baking thing that I had propped it on originally. Right? So now we're just going to carefully wiggle this out. And the best thing about Primo is that it's a little bit flexible after baking. And as long as this is all cool, which by the way, I would suggest doing it when it's cool. Don't do it when the clay is hot because I have found that it tends to, um, that's, that's when it's most fragile. It would maybe tend to want to rip. So wait till the whole thing is cool. I'm just using my um, tool here, my ultimate tool, to pull out that sticky uh, glue dot. And now we can slide this bead right onto the piece of leather. Isn't that cool? So this is an easy way to make your own specially sized, bakeable, flexible tool so that you can do all of the slide beads you want for whatever size uh, foundation you're working with. This happens to be three quarters of an inch leather in our leather kits, but you could do this for anything. If you wanted to put a bead on a ribbon or on a thinner piece of leather or whatever you want. So now you would just measure to fit whatever wrist you're trying to do. This 8 inches is, is going to go far because it comes with an extender chain of another 2 inches. So you've got plenty of room to work with. And like for me, my wrist is 6.5 inches, so I'd be cutting off down to about 6 inches, attaching the ends and the chain, and then I can wear this. So I hope you have fun and that you've got a great new tool in your arsenal and that you'll come over to Polymer Clay Tribe and show us what you make using these techniques. And if you are interested in any of the tools shown, those can be found in our shop, which is createalong.com. We'll see you next time on Polymer Clay TV.